So for those young people to not have to deal with all the stuff over the Christmas, because even though you can't, there's no, it's a dead period, you're still in constant communication. And for them to be able to, to end that process, which they wanted to do uh, and move on, I think was huge for those prospects. And then same thing for the coaches. Uh, so we had nine mid-years, so there were still six guys, you know, that I'm going to see and doing home visits and all that. It, nothing was different except they've already signed. And so it was just a, a, a very, uh, you know, laid back process. Uh, but yeah, it also allows you to, you know, really from a head coach standpoint, do a lot of spring recruiting uh, to where you can get ahead on some evaluation uh, on some young guys. And that's what was able to happen for us. But the travel is exactly the same. Really nothing changed for me. That's what I told y'all back in December. There's not one thing that was different in my world uh, in this past December than it's been for the last million years. I was still on the road, still doing recruiting visits, still trying to get ready for bowl games, still working practice stuff. The only thing difference, the only difference uh, was uh, guys were able to sign a piece of paper on, on December the 20th or whatever it was. That's it. They, they, at their choosing, could end the process if they wanted to. They didn't have to. That's the only thing different. Uh, and other than that, it's the exact same for me. It's always crazy that time of year, uh, you know. And so we've got all got support staff. They produce the scholarships and NLIs and send those out. I mean, you know, other than that, that's about it. Coach, when, when you're crunching your recruiting numbers and not knowing how much attrition you're going to have through the NFL and transfer, um, how difficult is that? And um, has, has the early signing period helped with managing that? Uh, well, I mean, I think uh, you know. Again, you you. you I think I've got a good gauge on my team. I try to communicate with these guys. Um, I actually had a conversation with, with, with several of them. I, I had a good feeling uh, on, on a few of them that, that uh, had articulated uh, that, that uh, this might be the case uh, as far as I had a good idea on how many might leave early. Uh, and because uh, I, I, I communicate, it's not like I just sit around and and wait for somebody to walk in my office. Uh, you know, we're, this is a constant communication. Um, and uh, so I had a good feel, but at the same time, uh, you never really know. And so you have to, you have to, for me, I'm cautious. I'm, I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to just go sign 25 every year. And then, all right, I, I've over-signed by five, and now i got to figure out who to run off or who to call and tell them, hey, you can't come. you got a gray shirt. Uh, that's not not who we are it's not how we built this program and uh it never will be that you know so um you know there there was uh, a couple other spots we probably could have filled this year had i known a little bit earlier uh you know but i do appreciate a couple of these guys at least letting me know so we did have a ch chance to continue to recruit a couple guys uh, but uh you know we'll have we'll have a, we'll have a few scholarships that we'll be able to uh, award to some guys in the fall uh, again, knowing that we're going to sign 25 next year. Is that position clear by week six? You know, they're going to transfer. They are. They are. They're going to graduate. They're going to both graduate. They're going to stay here and train. And Jabril, all those guys, they'll stay here and train, and and uh, we'll help. They won't help with the process. So, we're going to help them with that and help them get in the right spot. You know, they, there's a lot of trust there, and we have good relationships, and, and they, there's there's a lot of trust, uh, and they want us to help them make the best decision for them and that's, that's, what, that's what I tried to do with Zarek and uh, you know I'm glad that worked out and we'll help these guys make sure they make a good decision too. Was there real suspense with Justin and Mario or did y'all go in feeling like? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> there's plenty of suspense. Uh, Mario I had a good feel that he was coming he pretty much told me he was coming but uh, you know, you just never know. Uh, but his parents were very upfront with me. I just think that, uh, uh, you know, he just, you know, wanted to finish the process however he wanted to finish it. But I, I was pretty confident in him. Uh, you know, Justin, I felt like for a long time was coming. Uh, uh, you know, the pinky swear on Thursday, that was it. When he pinky sweared me, I was like, all right, we're going to get him. You don't break, you break a pinky swear, then, you know, we probably don't want you. So. Uh, was, uh, you know, no, there was there was plenty of drama and, and uh, plenty of uncertainty. Uh, when I left his house on 
Thursday, I think it was Thursday uh, of last week. You know, I felt I felt confident that we had done everything we possibly could. I'm so proud of Todd and Jeff Scott. Let me just tell you, Todd Bates and Jeff Scott did an amazing job. I, I, I recruited the state of Alabama forever. And when I was coaching at Alabama, it's, it's hard to, to sign players out of that state, even when you're there, uh, much less, you know, to come in out of state. And we've signed some good players uh, from Alabama, but uh, that just, again, shows you where we are as a program. To go into that state, uh, you're, you know, 30 minutes or so from Auburn, and, and you know, Alabama and what, they, what they've been able to do and, and sign the number one player in that state, uh, I'm just, I'm, that tells you the type of young man Justin is, the type of fan, the strength that his family has, because there's a lot of pressure on these guys. And, you know, especially people, people don't mean bad, but, you know, fans can sometimes, you know, they want kids to do what's best for them. And, uh, but he had a strong support cast around him. Uh, Coach DeBose and his wife Tracy were, were incredibly uh, supportive of uh, just making sure that, that, you know, we had a fair chance in the recruiting process. And, uh, and, and Jeff and Todd really, again, uh, just did a wonderful job. And, and, you know, we could have taken some other guys. Uh, we <laughs> had some other guys that, that we could have taken, but we were, we were all in on, on, on Justin. And, and, you know, he had given us enough of an indication to give us some hope to, to kind of hang in there with him. Uh, so this was a huge, huge, uh, you know, get for us today. Uh, again, uh, to, to go to the, there's not been many number one players lead the state of Alabama or Ohio, uh, and, and to be able to, to to get the number one player out of that state uh, says a lot about our program, uh, the young men here, uh, and then again the job that our that our coaching staff did, and, and just you know again creating uh, and, and being able to promote our our message, and make sure that they truly understand. I mean, his mom. Justin's mom, Sheree, and Aunt Joy, they were amazing in the process. Uh, took all, they did it the right way. They took all their trips. They were, because they weren't really sure. And, uh, you know, but in the end, uh, they were very comfortable with Clemson. And uh, a lot of that speaks to the relationships that we were able to develop in the process.